All right. I think we're live. Hello. Good morning. Can you guys hear me? I'm just going to bring up the chat. All right. Looks like we have audio and video. And the chat is working. Hello from Czech Republic. How are you doing, Sunny? Thanks for joining us today. All right. Who else is here? Hey, Comics Legend. As always, how you doing? Um, daylight saving in Australia already? October? Oh, yeah. Remember? Yeah. Uh, I think we've been daylight saving for a month. I, I don't know. I'm just completely out of it, out of the loop with this. We've been locked up for a long time. We just... Um, they just lift the restrictions for the corona um, last week. So, yeah, today is meant to be, or today is a public holiday, actually. So we're gonna we're gonna take it slow. It's gonna be a pretty chill session. Sweet. All right. Cool. So, um, just before we get started, I just wanna share something uh, that I'll probably share later on. Uh, when we have more people in, because I don't, cannot see. Anyway, I'll, I'll show you. Um, basically, hopefully you're excited about the the Zero Summit coming up. I think it's going to be pretty cool. Everything online definitely is going to be a lot more uh, people joining. I'm sure of that. And the great thing about it is that anyone can participate in the in the sculpt of, which is going to be awesome. So, um, where did I put it? Hang on. Here we go. Um, so yeah, the sculpt of is gonna be fantastic. So if you go to the Pixelogy website and to the Zero Summit 2020, uh, you will be able to complete the application and join and participate and and you know get all the get into the the whole thing. Uh, and it's gonna be pretty cool because the theme is steampunk, which I think is awesome. Um, anyway, what I wanted to show you is not only that this is gonna be happening and it's pretty cool but uh, Marlon and myself so obviously you know Marlon this guy right here <laughs> um, he he won in 2017 and we competed again um, on 2018 uh, in the in the yeah in the summit 2018 I think it was yeah 18 um, I got second place but anyway we just decided to uh, you know pulled our experience together and offer you guys some like tips and tricks and how to deal with like that kind of like pressure to actually complete something um, in like the three hours I think it is and so if you go to the 3D concept artist website uh, you can also go to the art hero's website his website either or I uh, would work on I think my my keyboard oh it was disconnected oh no and then have no battery. Ah, there we go. Cool. So, um, uh, hang on. No, that's not the one. Ignore that one. There we go. If you go to the Three concept artists you can join. Basically, if you click on this one, it will open up and you can register and it's a free webinar we're gonna be doing, um, the two of us. Hang on a second. I'm getting a bunch of pop-ups. Give me one second.
<laughs> FODN and Munoz and Nunez. Yeah. Um, okay, give me one second. I'll be back in just two seconds. All right, I'm back. Cool. So, yeah, so if you go to the 3D Concept Artist um, website, you will see this and you can just join this free. Uh, it's happening on the fifth Thursday Australia time uh, in the morning. And um, yeah, so if you join, just join, you'll get access to the webinar it's um it's a zoom meeting really that we're putting together and we're going to give you guys some tips and tricks if you're interested um to stream online because it's low the sculpting but let's say don't even have to talk or be on cam just show it um I, i'm not sure are you are you talking about the the sculpt of comics legend hey alex good to have you here cool Hey, motion bug, how you doing? Thanks, man. All right, um, yeah, so just go there, uh, or you can just go to the ZBrush Central. Uh, I put a, a link in there as well. Um, and I will see you n this week later on, on my Thursday morning. Um, so in a couple of days, so it's on the 5th. That gives you, you know, some tips and tricks to, um, you know, you can practice them in two days before the actual sculpt of, uh, yeah. So just go here to the Pixology website. Again, I'm pretty sure that I'm just going to share it just in case. And you can go in there. All right. So today I thought we just do something chill. Um, yeah, you don't have to talk or anything. It's, it's going to be pretty much like the, like the sculpt of that happens live or like in, like in person, but online. Yeah, that's pretty much all the all the um, the rules and everything are on the website. So once you register, you should be able to to see everything that you have to do and and how to do it. But it's pretty simple. Alrighty, so um, I think I'm just gonna do something. I'm gonna go out of my my comfort zone today and just do something uh, slightly different. Just working on maybe like a stylized, more cartoonish sort of thing just to explore other, other ideas and um, I'm gonna try to complete it today so it's gonna be pretty sketchy but hopefully you know uh, presentable as a, as a concept um, um, yep thanks for the for the rules yep cool so yeah let's go ahead and start today with um, I don't know like a character type of thing so I'm gonna select my 
move brush and Aki curve. Oh no, I can already tell that we might have some issues with the with the tablet. Come on, there we go. I updated the the drivers recently, so it's always a thing, right? All right, so this is gonna be the head. I'm gonna mask out an area like so. Bring in the gizmo. Push that down a, a little bit. Clear the mask, and I'm just gonna jump into. You know what? Let's um, yeah, let's line mesh this. Uh, that's too high. Let's actually do the opposite. Let's go back. And I'm going to enable the Sculptures Pro for the, the smooth brush. So I'm going to turn on polyframes so you can see what I'm doing. So this is obviously the alternative uh, to Dynamesh as well. So to block something up, this is pretty decent. Uh, obviously, the move brush doesn't work with, um, with Dynamesh. But you have the smooth brush, so it's having like the two, two tool sets in in one. Yeah, I'm having some issues with the with the tablet. Ugh, that's unfortunate. I might not be as fast as I wanted for the for the sketch or as productive, but we'll give it a go. I'm gonna do some sort of I don't know, like a hipster hipster dude we'll see how we go All right so that's gonna be the head <laughs> um, let's go ahead and append a cylinder and we're gonna keep things very simple it's gonna be the neck Yeah, something like that. Um, let's go ahead and merge that down. And we could dynam dynamesh this, right? But if we dynamesh, we sort of like lose that ability. I mean, it will dynamesh with the current resolution. So something you can do and keep using the Sculptis Pro if you don't want to, you know, do a lot of um, high res comb combination of merging these two together is to use the the merge by union. So right now, because they're in the same subtool, but at the same time, if you smooth them out with the Sculptures Pro, uh, they're actually separate geometry. So one thing you can do is bring in the gizmo and click on this remesh by union. That's it. And that essentially merges those two together. So now I can smooth this out and you see they're part of the same geometry. So that's just a, a quick and simple way. Let's enable symmetry. I'm going to do a mirror and well just in case. Set that up. Um, but we don't have to keep appending things, right? We can just uh, take advantage of the of the fact that we're using the Sculptures Pro, right? So I'm going to take the mask lasso, mask this area, invert the mask, and I'm going to bring in the gizmo center to the unmask area. And let's enable local symmetry. I'm going to scale this up. Actually, let's leave it out. This is going to be the, the body. So I just scaled that up. Um, but we can move that down, squish it like so. Maybe rotate it a little bit to give it some, you know, indica indication of the, of the rib cage. Let's make this dude a little bit more skinny. <laughs> let's turn on symmetry off. Uh, with symmetry, you can actually rotate it like just to give it again an indication of where the shoulders might be, right? But uh, I'm completely destroying the geometry, right? Um, what's great about this is that you can use the Sculptures Pro with uh, masking, so I can just hold Shift to smooth, and as I do that, I'm just adding geometry. Perfect. Uh, let's go ahead and repeat the same process, just masking out that 
area here at the bottom, invert, bring in the gizmo, push that down. I'm gonna reset this and flatten it just so that it's easier. Yep, something like that. And smooth out. So it's just a different a different tool. I, I use it quite a bit to just do this quite um this these sketches that are relatively quick and as a as a as a way of concepting really. Um some of the, the time some of the time <laughs> sometimes what I use with these some of the times is to get it to this <clears throat> to this point and they will just serve me as a as a reference or as a as a three D reference and then just take a screenshot or you know do a quick render and then I can do a paint over just to refine the idea but I'm gonna try to yeah go for something stylized. Okay. Um let's go ahead and do the arms and then we go for some details of the, of the head. Uh for the arms so here's another thing that uh we can do. I think for the arms in this case it would be easier to just append a different yeah, let's append a cylinder. I'll have a look at the chat in just a second. I see some activity there. So again, let's make these guys like a skinny dude. So that's gonna be the arm. I'm gonna hold control and drag to create the form. Yeah, something like that. And if we work on the hands in, in just a bit, but I think that would be that'd be good. So clear the mask. And this this time we can do the same thing really. Just go to the gizmo. So I'm repeating the process again um, of merging by union. I have Sculptris Pro. I'm gonna reduce the brush so that it doesn't tessellate it as much. And smooth that out. Right. Now this area that you know to to stylize the arm and, and get an indication of those forearm muscles, I'm just gonna smooth this a bit and it's obviously very it's very hard to get a very I'd say polished surface obviously with um, using Sculptris Pro right but this it's just really easy to block these things out without worrying about anything just focusing on, on volumes and that sort of thing so once you have those ready it's gonna be really easy to just do a quick serial mesh and then get something a bit nicer and cleaner to to polish. But again, we'll see how far we can get this. Like I said, I wanna, you know, usually I de I do the the streams and it takes me two or three streams to complete something just to give you some tools. Um, but in this case, I wanna probably just finish it today. It's gonna be pretty chill. And obviously, guys, if you have any questions, put it in the chat. I'll have a look as soon as I put this back. Um, now this is too tiny. This is one of the the issues of working too close to your model. All right, that'll be cool. Um, maybe even further away. So obviously it's not. Is not perfect. I just want to create a, a base, and then I'm gonna do some some clothing. Maybe we use dynamics. Dynamics with Dynamesh, actually, something that if you haven't tried, probably that's a it's a good thing. Um, all right, so I'm gonna do a mirror and weld. Perfect. Go back to the to the head, and I'm gonna do the the ears, following the same principle, the same idea. Uh, so with the mask pen, hold control, something like that. 
think maybe lower for now. Go for something like that and invert it, bring in the gizmo to the unmask areas. I have local symmetry as well. Push this, oops. Push that like so. Scale that up. Rotate it. Maybe the larger brush size. Uh, if you're using Sculptris Pro, obviously, the larger the brush, the more tessellation you get. But that's that's plenty for the ear. And I'm just going to flatten certain bits. Um, hang on, let me see the chat. I just, I've missed a couple of things there. Um, who will win in an arm wrestle contest? If it is pure strength, um, definitely, I, I will definitely win. We'll, we'll have to test that out next time. Um, will you explain how to make double action brushes? Um, so, I could, uh, yeah, I, I'm, I've done that in some streams, really. It's not... It's not like a like a secret thing. You just enable certain things, and there are a couple of, um, yeah, a couple of features in the in the brush palette that would allow you to do that. But right now, I'm kind of like doing a different thing, so it might it might break the flow a bit if I explain that. But you can go to different like previous stream. I think the the first one that we did with the pumpkin, I talked about that. Um, I have one big question. Uh, yeah, yeah, just feel free to put any questions in the chat, like if I can answer them, of course. Hey, David, uh, I wanted to ask you which one of you use more when blocking out the mesh, Dynamesh or Sculptris Pro? Um, in all honesty, Dynamesh is kind of like what I grew accustomed to. Um, it's really fast for me, but for this type of like quick quick things sculptures pro is is yeah it's really easy is it's kind of like you don't have to even worry about redynameshing every time that I'll, I'll show you a couple of techniques actually and and you'll probably see a, a better use of the of the difference uh, when I get to the hands it depends on on what you're trying to do ultimately like anything like any anything in zbrush All right, so I'm going to clear the mask now. Just going to fix this. And flatten this a bit more. And again, this is going to be the, the simple block out, in a way, of the cartoonish thing. I don't know why I like big, big ears like that. <laughs> But then we can obviously use uh, other tools. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is set up the like the clothing. I'm not entirely happy with the arms or anything, but. All right, um, so a quick setup for the cloth. We can use, let's go to the texture palette, click on the lightbox texture, and I'm gonna go ahead and bring in, if it loads, oh, not texture, sorry, um, lightbox, the spotlight, sorry. So here, I'm, I'm gonna bring in the 260, 256 resolution one, and for that, Gonna go ahead and edit spotlight and oh can you guys see this? Let's put it on this side. And let's see. Let's give it a big shirt like this one. So to make one of these images larger with the spotlight, just double click on it. 
Oh, actually, <laughs> you should be able to do it. I don't know why. Anyway, you just click on it and scale it. Thing is, when you have more, li more something like this, and then you switch. Uh, doesn't do it for some reason. Anyway, uh, I'm gonna set this center point right in the middle of the spotlight, right? So it will just snap to those points. So now this is right in the center, and I can do the same thing based on the volumes. You see, as I move things around, I have these dots that I can snap to, and that that should be the volumes of this uh, subtool that I have selected. So I'm gonna set it up, maybe like that. Uh, but another thing you can do actually, if I put this on the side, is push this at the top. Will it? It also will snap. And then just try to find whoops. And then just try to find um ah, come on. I keep doing the wrong thing. Alright, snap there. Select it. So ah, I'm just gonna select it and push it in here. <laughs> um cool. And let's see, something like that. Right, I think think that'll be alright. Maybe a bit lower. Yeah. So all I'm going to do now is take the arms, and I'm gonna rotate them up a bit. There we go. Bring in the spotlight again. Select the body uh, because whatever you Whenever you project like actual geometry from the spotlight, it's gonna be based on the volume of the subtool that you have selected. So in other words, this shared is gonna be as thick as the as the body, not the arms, because that's the one that I have selected. So let's go ahead and do um, a snapshot 3D. So this little camera here basically is gonna take whatever image you have in here and it's gonna project it based on that volume that I mentioned. Oops. And now we have this geometry, right? Which is pretty, pretty cool. Um, and you have also polygroups. And those red lines that you, hopefully you saw that, those red color, that red, red, red color is gonna create a different polygroup. So you can create your own images, just black and white. Um, you know, the, the background would be black. That's why it comes as transparent. And then you just put this pure red as different polygroups if you want to get them. So now this is going to be really easy to do a quick zero measure, do a, a simulation and then continue working from there. So it doesn't have to be like one of the things that, um, you know, like I, I say to, to my students, for example, is don't don't worry about, uh, you know, getting, getting locked in into the perfect topology and that's it. In a way, it's like this is a very, very sketchy mesh when you go do the, the retopology and you know do the simulation, that doesn't mean that that should stay like that. And then you can continue with the subdivision. You can you know redynamesh it and keep working like that. It, it doesn't really matter. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is turn on transparency. I'm gonna flatten this a bit more just to get it closer to the body. All right, and Let's go ahead and delete some of these polygroups. So I'm gonna obviously open the shirt. I just hit those polygroups. I'm also gonna hit these ones. So we only have three and go ahead and delete hidden. And I'm gonna use a, a polish by groups just to polish the entire thing. Perfect. And we can go ahead and do a serial measure. I'm gonna do it in half, and I'm gonna keep polygroups. Um, keep groups. We don't have to smooth anything because we, um, I did it manually. <coughs> and I have symmetry enabled. I'm gonna do a serial measure. See what happens. Um, let's see. Should 
Should there be a rush to merge pieces together or should we wait later in the process when everything is in place? Uh, there's no there's no rush for either or. Um, you usually merge things when you need to or like, let's say the, the head and the neck and the body are merged together. But if I wanted to, and that's just because it's easy to, you know, get the, you know, that curvature of the jaw and the connection and all of that, even though this is like super sketchy and, you know, it looks like the, the neck is actually thicker at the top. So anyway, <laughs> so if at some point I, I say, you know what, it's going to be easy to just work with the head separately uh, for whatever reason, I just separate it and keep working separate. It doesn't have to be, everything doesn't have to be merged. So it's, it's really depending on what you, what your workflow is, or what helps you in your workflow. Uh, I would just say that as a general rule, keep limbs separate in a way until the end, until when when you actually need to measure them and maybe do a, a retopology, but you don't have to. You can keep everything separate for you know if it, if it is easy to manipulate, and then do a retopology as a as a solid mesh, like a like a merging type of thing. So the sketch that you did with the Sculptures Pro and DynaMesh is separate, but the retopology is unified. Okay, so I'm gonna do another zero mesher. And I'm going to turn on legacy now just because there is, yeah, the legacy is, is better or I found it to be better in certain, in certain cases uh, for organic stuff. So you saw some of the, the corners get a, a little bit more of those loops, but it's totally fine. I'm going to do it again. And you can mix and match, right? So after I got something like this, can do another zero mesha, so that's better, right? That's that's, that's the reason I, I I use these in combination. So sometimes just using the zero mesha algorithm, the latest one uh, by itself, might not give you the results you want when you're working with organic stuff. But if you use the legacy, you might be all right. Now these ones in the middle, I'm gonna actually collapse them, so we don't need to have that many loops. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring in the C modeler. I'm going to right click on an edge, go to delete, edge loop complete, and I'm just going to delete all of those. Because these ones are going to be pretty close together anyway. And I have a symmetry, so I'm doing it on both sides. Perfect. All right, let's do a quick save. Um, that's it, really. Let's do a quick check. Perfect. So this is going to be a pretty, you know, baggy shirt in a way, uh, but we can tweak a few things. So if you want to, um, you know, adjust the shape before you run the simulation. So that's um, that's why the infinite depth is so cool. So if I go to the brush palette and I have the move brush and I have the AccuCurve brush, the AccuCurve, sorry, the I have the move brush and the AccuCurve featured enable in that brush. And we can go to um, depth in the depth sub palette. You have this infinite depth and by default it should be on the Z axis and I should be facing the Z axis. I'm just yeah, double check. If you enable floor, you'll see that blue line that indicates the Z axis, this one that is referring to. Um, so what I'm going to do is enable that. And what this does is going to, if you're looking at from, let's say, from this point, right? And I push this, maybe that's not the best way, from this angle, right? So if I take this corner, right? Because I'm I'm having this infinite depth, it's kind of like moving things with like a tube that goes along the z-axis. So anything that goes in, in that point that I touch um, in that axis is gonna move together. So just by clicking on this one, I move the other one as well, right? So what I like to do with this is go into the front view, maybe turn off perspective, it's off, cool. Um, and maybe turn on the lock camera so that I don't move it accidentally. And then I can adjust a little bit of this. Again, I wanna make like this baggy shirt. And of course, after this, you can do another zero measure, but I think it's gonna be fine. 
Uh, we talked about this infinite depth a little bit more, uh, or we yeah we did a bit more of this infinite depth adjustments when we did the the guitar a few streams ago. Okay. All right, I think that's it. So it's just a quick adjustment based on the on the volumes that we have. Turn that off. And now we can move into the um, dynamics. So let's take dynamic palette to this side. So the first thing is to enable collision volume so that zeroes know that anything else that is visible in the canvas currently, uh, we want to actually use that as a collision volume for, you know, to interact with this mesh that we just created in this case the arms and the head. If we turn off the arms for example and we do the same thing or in this case that I already did that if I turn off the arms and I do recalculate it's going to recalculate those volumes. So in theory I actually haven't tested this but in theory <laughs> if I disable everything or like turn it off and I don't have solo right I just turn this other off and I run the simulation it should still interact because it's sort of like remembering those um, those volumes. Let's see. Uh, it might not work no, <laughs> so we do have to have them on. Let's try it again. No, hang on. Let's do recalculate simulation. Hmm. Let's do collision volume. Calculate, run simulation. It's not interacting with it for some reason. What am I missing? All right, um, I'm gonna bring in the transpose cloth. So it is working. Oh, of course. <laughs> All right, so it is working, right? As you can see. Um, the reason is not interacting with the bodies because we don't have enough geometry to interact with it, right? So when I run the simulation, there's no there's no way to deform anything. Um, so what I'll do, let's go ahead and turn off gravity and let's enable the uh, deflate or contract actually in the z-axis. So let's try that one first, right? So that's that's a bit better. Um, I might want to go back to the body just for the sake of, of the simulation itself. I'm going to push this thing down. back to the normal transpose. All right, so this would be kind of like the body. There we go. So now there's going to be better a better deformation there. All right. So if I go ahead and if I run it right now, it's going to ignore that bit that we that we added because it's a new volume, right? So it's going to ignore that bit. So I have to recalculate that and do it again. That's it. So that's that's fine. I mean, if, if you have a better surface <laughs> or a better um, base mesh, it's not going to look as awful as what I did there. Uh, but we have something sort of like following that um, as, a, as a starting point. But now we can go ahead because we have the geometry now. Um, we can do turn this off, enable gravity. Let's do a quick run simulation. Um, and that's sort of like let the whole thing, like the drapery is going to generate that um, effect of the, of the gravity, uh, which is great. And I'm going to turn, oh, by the way, if you want, you can keep using Sculptures Pro. That's what I was saying before, right? You can keep doing this, you know, 
maybe not that, but you can still run the simulation with Sculptures Pro, which is crazy. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm what I was referring to. But what I'll do is now that I have something that works a little bit better, I'm just adjusting the shape with the move brush, maybe increasing the size of this a bit. Uh, what I can do is do another zero mesh. So let's do that. I'm gonna do a zero mesh. Maybe I'm not gonna keep groups this time. Legacy. Hang on. Let me push this one back in just to get something better. All right, and then I'm gonna do remeshing. That looks good. I'm gonna turn off the the sculptures project so that I can smooth these things a bit better. Um, let's keep keep the half off. Remesh that. There we go. All right. So just a little bit of back and forth between the zero measure and all of that, but we have something that sort of conforms to the body. Uh, Again, the body, the, the underlying geometry was purely to simulate this. The the actual volume and you know the, the sculpting bit would be directly on the shirt because you won't be able to see the body anyway. So we'll just do that. I have to tweak this a little bit more. All right, I'm spending way too much time on this one. Um, but now that we have this sort of baggy shirt, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just very quickly, I'm doing, I'm gonna do something because it's, it's just getting out of hand, the, the size. So I'm gonna go to the Transpose Master, T-Pose, Mesh, and I'm gonna unify everything and then go back. So that's basically taking all of the subtools and changing the, the size so that we can work with the brushes a bit better. All right, so I'm gonna take that shared so that we see something a bit more, something nicer, going to Dynamic, Subdivision, turn on dynamic. Uh, actually, before I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and crease by polygroup, which, sorry, crease by polygroup, which is going to just um, crease all the open edges. Now we can do dynamic so we don't lose that volume. And we can use the thickness just to add some thickness. I'm gonna add the thickness in the negative value. Yep, that's. That looks that looks good, and we can keep refining the the shape. But um, this is really good because you are actually tweaking the the low res mesh, right? But you get that smooth version, maybe a, a V neck type of thing. Alrighty, so that's kind of like a starting point. I'm gonna take this, this guy and let's keep working on this a bit more. So I'm not gonna give him a mouth and in fact, the eyes are just gonna be, you know, let's take the clay brush. Um, I think at this point we can just dynamish this whole thing with a larger resolution. So you can use Dynamesh and Sculptures Pro in, in at different stages, it doesn't really matter. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, it depends on, on what you're trying to achieve and whatever works best for you. I mean, when when I when I teach kind of like my workflow in, let's say, in the extra mile course and, and that sort of thing, I, I do go into a lot more depth as in what are the, the steps that I consider to be really useful to, to follow. But at the end of the day, um, is whatever works for you, right? So if you're comfortable with Sculptris Pro, then just go for that. If Sculptris is, is uh, sorry, if Dynamesh is your thing, 
they all um, at the end everything everything that I'm, that I'm doing is to achieve the same the same goal. I'm just gonna push this, saturate all of that, and I'm gonna go ahead and bring in, or maybe just mask the nose. Let's do something like that. Let's refine the mask. And bring in the gizmo. Where is the gizmo? Uh, it's far, so, okay. Turn off symmetry. I'm gonna send it to the unmask areas. I'm gonna put it right at the, oops, at the nose bridge. So holding all to change the pivot. And I'm just going to do that. And go, on, go ahead and bring in the move brush. Tweak that a bit. Let's clear the mask. Oops. Redynamage slightly higher resolution. And I think I didn't have enabled symmetry, so I'm just going to mirror and weld that. So again, this is still like very blocky. Um, we're gonna definitely do something about um, the stylization in, in just a bit, hopefully. And one of the things that it's kind of, it's, well, I mean, not kind of like really important is to play with the proportions. So right now it's, you know, pretty pretty basic pretty generic, I guess. All right, so what I'll do is bring in a couple of spheres for the eyes. Um, maybe he's gonna have his eyes closed, gonna have a happy expression. So uh, I'm gonna click on the IMM primitives, click on a sphere, and I have the symmetry. I'm gonna push the depth down, click and drag. Maybe, um, you know, some some smaller eyes would be fine. Just creating the volumes for it. Bring the gizmo local symmetry. All right, so that that would be kind of like the the eyelids in a way. Um, you'll see what I mean in a second. Uh, but before I redynamize that, I'm gonna use the curve tube as well, and I'll create some sort of eye bags. Oops like that. Right? And this is great because I can go ahead and take the move brush. I'm going to smooth out some of these. But this is just like um like adding a piece of clay really. That you can obviously tweak a bit. Um in fact, you can create your own insert brush that has like pieces of clay in a way <laughs> um, and then just use that this technique that I'm just showing you I'm also gonna clear that mask isolate the eyes every time that you insert something new inside ZBrush with the insert brushes it's gonna have um, its own polygroup right so I can iso isolate that really really easy there we go and now we can go ahead and clear that or redynamize that. Again, you can definitely do that with a high res if you want. Um, and because this is gonna be a stylized and you wanna polish this, you can enable polish as well. So that's gonna run kind of like a clay polish as it dynamizes. Let's do it again. So you keep everything, like all the planes and everything very clean and, and the lines very clean. I'm gonna smooth this out. So you see this, the idea was just to create those sort of volumes. You can come back with the clay brush, flatten this a little bit more. And you can do the same thing for anything, like the same technique, like let's say 
for the cheekbones just add a you know the tubes again dynamesh and adjust that but I think it works right so now I'm gonna bring in my damp standard it's not the damp standard the oh, what did I put it now the damp standard get a little bit closer here and it's gonna do this I don't know I, I, I don't know what but I'm, I'm thinking kind of like this um, this hipster dude that is trying some tea or something and some herbal tea or something like that Um, I might want to just add a bit more resolution. I'm just going crazy with the resolution now, but it it is fine. It's just a sketch. Um, let me see the chat. Hey, Spicer, how's it going? The golden nuggets. Hey, Jevin, how you doing? Uh, can you use marmoset set of instead of kitchen? I mean, can I render a heavy mesh without UVs directly in marmoset? set? Yeah, absolutely. Um, Jevin, I think Jevin. I'm pretty sure Jevin, you you are the extra maler, Jevin. <laughs> so, but I apologize if not. But yeah, if you just follow the uh, the course, there is a module called um, or a, a lesson which is rendering for prototyping where I show you basically that just uh, how to render without basically a dynamesh, a high res mesh in Marmoset and, and all of that to do the prototyping, test the lights and all of that. So if you just follow the, you know, the linear workflow of the course, you'll get to that in in no time. How far ahead I, do I plan my projects? Not very far, depending on the project. This one, I haven't planned it. <laughs> so I'm, I'm working as I like planning it as I go. Um, would I also participate in the sculpt of? Uh, I would really want to. Um, we'll see how I go with the time because I'm like really, I'm, I'm a little bit behind in my schedule on, on what I was planning to do for the release of my new course, the Ultimate Seabrush Guide course. But I do, I mean, there are only three hours. I would just don't have any time for prepare or practice, but it would be really cool. Awesome. Cool. All right. So I think. This works if you want to sort of sharpen, let's say the, in this case the, the eyelids. You can hold the Alt key. And then sharpen that up like that very easily. And let's see. Uh, another way to do that or to keep sharpening this is using the uh, pinch brush. So that's gonna help a lot with that sharpness uh, but I think that's that's what I wanted um, I'm gonna go ahead and also refine a bit of the nose not that I have I, I don't want to have nostrils or anything but just the the shape here um, in fact, let's just go ahead and use the inflate brush and make it kind of like a, just to, just to see if it works. Um, I don't know. What do you guys think? Nah, I think sharper in this case works a little bit better. And yeah, I don't, I don't think I'm gonna use any or do any mouth. I'm just gonna give him a beard that is gonna cover it anyway. Just gonna refine the the ears a bit and a little bit of the jaw I mean again I'm gonna cover it with the beer but just to get a, a sense of where to place it I guess 
it'll be fine. I'm gonna enable perspective as well. Maybe bring the eyes closer. And let's see. I'm gonna refine the, the ears a bit because sometimes you know you tend to focus too much on on one area just because that's the area that you will see or I mean if you're doing it for a if you're sculpting for a render that's totally valid um, I do that all the time in, in fact but you know in this case I don't want to neglect certain areas like the ears because they're quite prominent <laughs> so just a bit of the the usual sculpting damn standard smoothing keep everything clean at, at this point you know as clean as a uh, dynamesh could be right and I'm gonna sharpen the cheekbones just holding the old key to get a, a sharper line there um, that was too much <laughs> so I'm gonna take the H polish and flatten that bit so that helps to accentuate that that line and keep the planes I'm gonna do the same thing here for the nose and potentially for again the the jaw is going to be covered in just a second. How are we going with time? Perfect. Uh, but just to get an idea. Okay, let's flatten that forehead. And I'm doing, uh, I'm just pressing a little bit softly with this brush, uh, but then I'm going with the smooth brush and keeping everything clean or as, again, as clean as I can. Okay, I might want to refine this tiny bit more. So I'm losing some of those volumes that I created originally. Okay, now we can take the move brush, do uh, some minor adjustments, especially here for the nose. I want a thinner and again I'm I'm just gonna play around with the proportions a tiny bit more on the on the placement of the features of the face. I think this guy's gonna look completely different in once I add the the other bits of and pieces, but Mm, I'm I'm not a hundred percent sure about the eyes, so what I'll do is I'm gonna mask them. Maybe the entire set of features of the eye, including that eye bag. And I'm gonna invert it, blur the mask, bring in the gizmo centered. It's gonna scale. Oops. I'm gonna scale it up. I don't know if this is gonna work, but. Mm. Let's see. I'm going to compare these two. Nah, it's alright. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to do the eyebrows, and that's just going to be a couple of extra geometries. So I'm going to hold control, mask this. In fact, let's just do it in one side. 
let's do it on this side. It doesn't have to be perfect again, it's just to get some quick geometry going. Like that, invert, and then we can go ahead and extract from the subtool palette. Uh, click on extract, that's definitely too thick. Um, that should be right. Click accept. Clear the mask in both meshes. So now we have this mesh that we can easily polish by groups and polish by features if you want, or just polish in general. Um, maybe just a bit of polish actually to soften it. And I'm going to do a polygroup all. And let's go to the zero mesh and let's reduce. Quite a bit. Okay, so this type of meshes that are pretty simple, you can start working with a zero mesh from the beginning. There's no need to keep it, you know, the dyna mesh on, but so that would be the thick eyebrow. Uh, what I can do is do a clay, couple of clay polishes, maybe. Oh, before I do that, let's adjust a bit of the shape. And because I have the the Aki curve, I can just create these sort of pointy areas. All right, clay polish now. I'm going to do a mirror and weld without the local symmetry, of course. So now we have that and we can enable symmetry. I have um, a pretty high res dynamic, so I'm going to bring in, let's go to brushes. The smooth brush, I'm going to bring in the smooth stronger. I had, I haven't added to the new UI. All right. So now we can smooth this faster, even though it is a pretty high res mesh. All right. So that's cool. Um, let's do the beard for this guy. So again, I'm just going to keep it simple. Um, I'm going to append a sphere. And you can do the same thing uh, like I did with the um, with the eyebrows, but in this case, I want to sculpt it a little bit more and manipulate it. So it's going to be easier if I have like a solid mesh rather than a thin area. All right. And I'm going to enable obviously symmetry. And this is just going to be, you know, using the move brush to to pull this in. Um, um, we'll check it out. Cool. Do you speak Spanish? Uh, um, si, sí, hablo español. But most of my streams are in English. Maybe I should try. Uh, I've been saying that I've been. Um, that I've been planning to do it, but I I actually will do it. I promise. Do I always go with perspective on? Um, not always. In most of the time, to be honest, but not always. I mean, having the ability to turn it on and off is is the key, really. Sometimes it's easier to do it without a perspective. But if you're gonna render like an isometric kind of like render, yeah, you you could just work all the time in perspective or perspective of because that's going to be the end but 
um, if you're not planning to do that, better to, to work without, uh, without perspective. Um, share the UI. Um, <laughs> yeah, so if you go to, I mean, if you're interested in a, in a custom UI, this one has too many macros and things that I've, you know, put together. But yeah, if you if you're interested in a in a UI, you can just go to the um, the starter kit that I shared for the Ultimate Zero Guide course, and that comes with a UI if you're interested. I mean, this is a this is a very long face. All right, so <laughs> that's um, that's the starting point of the beer for this guy. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this. I'm gonna make it a Q sphere. That is going to be the mustache. I'm gonna keep it separate so that it's easy to to block. Let's do a dynamesh for this guy. All right, I'm not super happy about the the face and the proportions really. I'm gonna super simplify this. If you take the move brush, um. I think it's just the head, it looks a bit too generic at the moment. Maybe it's the nose. I'm gonna mask the eyes and push the nose down. Or app. I don't know. This is what we need to start playing around with. Maybe less nose. Nah. <laughs> so as you can see, it's not it's not planned. It's just um, we're sketching and figuring things out as we go. Maybe it's this. Could put it higher. Let's do an inflate quickly. I'm gonna do actually a, a zero measure for this guy. Um, although, mm, well, let's keep it as a dynamic object. And what I'll do is, okay, I know what I'm going to do. I'm gonna add some more details about with with geometry rather than sculpting anything. So, let's create a new mesh, like a cylinder, make it a polymesh 3D. I'm going to unify that, make it smaller. And I'm going to dynamesh this. And with dynamesh, I'm just going to smooth this out. 
and create kind of like um just a blob really a tear shape type of thing that we're gonna add to the beard just kind of like make it messy but stylized messy messy if that makes sense i'm gonna bring in the gizmo use the taper the format maybe maybe like that i'm gonna bring the inflate brush So it's a pretty high res. Let's reduce the dynamic resolution. Okay, that's fine. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect. So I'm gonna take this. I'm gonna click on Insert Mesh, New. I'm gonna push this down so that when I insert it, you get like this sort of blobs. Let's see if that works. Uh, that's not it. Here we go. So I'm going to use the beard. Just to place these things. Maybe let's start here from the without symmetry here. In fact, let's go back to this thing and do a couple of times. Um, the the way that you create the insert brush obviously is gonna affect the insert, so or the the position of the insert. So I'm gonna do a slight shift in the camera. Click insert. I'm gonna append to the existing one. So now I have this one that is is inserted in a slightly different angle. So it's just gonna create this, these pieces for the beard. Hopefully, this is gonna work the way that I was hoping. Let's push it in a little bit more. And I'm gonna dynamish all of this so we will, we will be able to smooth out the transition quite easily. Let's switch to the previous one that we can insert kind of like more straight on. And that would be a good one just to add some volume here at the bottom. All right, clear that mask. Maybe do a couple more for the, like here in the, in the mustache. All right, so that's that's about it, really. I'm gonna take this beard, the beard, and I'm gonna run a Dynamesh with clay polish and a larger resolution. Let's see. We'll definitely need more than that, maybe without polish. We're gonna need a lot more than that. I think that's about what I wanted. Um, I don't have symmetry anymore, so I'm just gonna go slowly a little bit with the with the smooth brush, and I'm just gonna play with the transition here. So all I'm trying to do really is just get that 
top area of those tear shapes blending a bit better with the rest. That's all. So that, you know, they feel more connected. Alrighty. Maybe here at the bottom as well, let's go into solo mode. And this is one of the great things ab about keeping everything uh, at this stage into the different or separate subtools. So you can, you know, you can work a little bit faster. Because you can concentrate on a specific area just by isolating it. Uh, some of the areas here might be a little bit too gappy. Um, I'm going to use the inflate brush and just bring them closer together. So in case I do another Dynamesh, they will work a bit better uh, together. Alrighty, I think the beard is almost there. I think it works. And perhaps, I think it's working fine. Cool. Let's just do the same thing for the mustache. The mustache, we need quite a few, like a, a larger value in the resolution. But the rest is the same, just smoothing that out. So I'm not, not necessarily interested in keeping the the very defined shapes of the, the blobs that we added. That those are just to generate some volume and, and variate the yeah, variate the the silhouette in a way of the shapes. So maybe this one right here is a bit weird, so we can just flatten that and smooth that. Just repeat that, maybe do it with the trim dynamic actually. Perfect. Um, so I'm going to take the eyebrows now and we could simply enable dynamic and we can do a inflate and a little bit of polish just to soften that so that it goes in line with the, with the rest of the design really. Um, so you make separate eyelids for him, most of the, sorry, like, so do you make separate eyelids for him like most of other artists? Separate eyelids? You mean like if, like this is a solid piece right now. I don't, I'm not sure like separate eyelids. I wouldn't separate the eyelids really. I would just, if I'm making him with like the eyes open, they will be separate, but I wouldn't make him a, like different um, subtools in this case. Although we could, I mean, yeah, we could do that. We can just delete those eyes if you want, for example, right? Um, and then have them as a yeah more stylized. If anything, let's just go ahead and. I'm gonna, we have 40 minutes, so I'm gonna append a sphere. And this is a, I mean, this is a technique that probably is more in line with the stylization that I'm looking for. So maybe let's change the eyes a bit. Make them smaller.
here. I'm just doing a quick sculpting here to compensate for the quick changes. Um, but yeah, so now that I have this sphere here, uh, what we can do is a couple of things. We can do three spheres and one for each, one for each eyelid and one for the actual eye, and then you can have you know we can play with the expression. So let's uh, let's leave this one as the eyeball. Let's duplicate. Let's rename that. Um, I'm gonna put it in a new folder actually. Eye or eyes. Uh, this one I'm gonna rename eye. eyelid All right so let's go to solo mode and I'm gonna use hold control and shift and I'm gonna use the uh, the trim curve so I'm gonna trim that just straight line in there maybe a bit more there we go so that's the eyelid one of the eyelids and what I'll do is duplicate that, eyelid 2, and that one I'm going to rotate it 180 degrees. Right? Um, so now I'm going to turn on the eye. I'm going to take the eye and actually deflate it a bit. I'm going to turn on transparency, um, use the inflate in a negative value, about 3. So we have a thick eyelid. Um, and then I can take the lower eyelid and then do something oops, do something like this just to sort of like make him make him sleepy still and then play with the top eyelid as well just to enhance that expression of like he can he can be bothered. <laughs> Right, so I don't know if that answers the question, but yeah, you can totally do something like this. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and transform the entire set. Maybe just even make this just a bit smaller. And push it in a bit more. All right, um, let's go back to the head use the move brush with AccuCurve to push things a bit so you can see more of that the lacrimal in a way and maybe push this forward so all of these are just small tweaks to to compensate really the, the changes that we did for the eye um, but we can go ahead and maybe just duplicate So now we have the same eye on the other side, and I'm just going to go ahead and flip or mirror everything. So now we have the two separate eyes uh, with all the subtools in individually. All right, um, I think maybe they too small. <laughs> <laughs> so let's see. Oops. Why is he going there? All right. Maybe that's better. I don't know. Like this is the type of things that I spend quite a bit of time just refining. Uh, I'm just gonna keep this uh, folder at the top just as a as a backup. And what I'll do is I'm gonna merge these down. So merge folder. Yeah, we can keep that as a backup as well. So now I have the the same 
the same thing, but we have polygroups and we can potentially just do a quick polish. No, not so. Hang on. Did I merge as a... Oh, no, that's not what I wanted. Yeah, that's not what I wanted. Uh, let's do it again. Merge folder. All right, so this one should be, yeah, that should be better. <laughs> and then auto group. All right, so I just merged that folder. So I have three sub tools in one single one, uh, but because they're separate objects, we can do a quick polish to soften those borders. And we can definitely enable dynamic if we wanted to, just to get you know, a softer view of that. And we can just do a mirror and weld and have them in the same sub tool. So it's easy to, to work with. And um, yeah, that's it. In fact, let's go back to this guy, bring in the gizmo, center to the unmask areas. And now we have symmetry, so we can just actually play with the, you know, with the size. I don't know if it's a smaller one or a larger one. I think a larger eye will make him look more annoyed. Yeah, I think I'm going to go for that. Exaggerated. And he has like some sort of bulging eyes. All right. So now again, go back to the to the face and let's compensate for the for the new eyes. Um maybe we can make the cranium be narrower. flatter I don't know <laughs> I'm just like trying to come up with something interesting but I think it works um, what I'll do is do a bit of um I don't know for the for the hair just thinking what could work fine because we have about 30 minutes I did want it um, to finish this one up today but yeah we probably can, you know, do the the hands later on, and do the posing in the next in the next stream. Uh, although there's not going to be next. Well, I mean, next week we have the. Is it next week? Yeah, next week I think we have already the the sculpt of or the the zero summit really. <laughs> so we might have to wait a couple weeks to finish up this guy. So you see how much this has changed in terms of the design. And that's that's kind of like a, a key thing about, you know, sketching in ZBrush is you shouldn't be worried about, you know, dynameshing and redynameshing and just changing things. Because it's very easy. It's just the, the whole point is finding something that you're happy with and that you like. I'm going to bring in the pinch just to sharpen those those lines and we can definitely you know polish this a bit more with the flat, um with the edge polish Okay so um Just want to polish this a bit more. So yeah, for the uh, for the head or for the hair, maybe he's got wearing a beanie. Let's do a quick test and see if that would work fine. Um, pen. 
and sphere. Oops, sphere. Maybe a smaller bin. Something like that. I'm gonna taper this area. And let's go ahead and yeah, let's use dynamics quickly. So that's fine. I'm gonna recalculate that piece, bring in the gizmo for the clothes, so transpose cloth, and then just push this down. So undo all of that. So um, that gap that you saw there, that is with the that has to do with the inflate, which is kind of like the collision distance. So I'm gonna put it at 0.2 and recalculate all of that. Right, and then we can use the move um, the hook brush hook cloth I'm gonna add a bit more firmness to that or more iterations really a bit more and this is one of the things that I that I love about this dynamics is like you can you know this could be a dynamesh in fact let's do that could be a dynamesh object maybe a bit more so 5000 can even go higher than that 19000 that's plenty uh, but it's still you know you can still manipulate it as if it's just a piece of um piece of cloth with dynamics Maybe it's too thin. Let's inflate that. I'm going to use the normal move pro just to fix that bit. So yeah, I can just keep redynameshing. We can just run simulation. Oops. Uh, maybe with less gravity. And let's pull this one back. All right, I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna inflate all of that because this is starting to get a bit too like real. Dynamesh, smooth. I'm gonna change to my normal move brush. Close holes just in case. Uh, do a bit more inflate. I wanna take advantage of all of this, these nice wrinkles, but just to get an indication of it. I'm gonna do a clay, oops. So undo that. I'm gonna try the clay polish. Clear the mask, clay polish, and smooth all of that. All right, now we can go back to the usual sculpting. So you see, it's just a combination of of processes, really. But it's just so easy. <laughs> it just sim simply um, you take a dynamesh object. Oh, actually, I do. Hang on. Oh, I had some some masking. All right. Alrighty.
Um, Uh, can you talk about more about your brush knife? Uh, it's like most of the same as the damp standard brush, really soft, cool thing. So, Gil, yeah. So, yeah, Gil. Um, apparently, th uh, that's that's what he told me that he is now his new stand uh, damp standard. Like he uses it a lot, and yeah, it's actually pretty handy. I did it for the um, for the clay brushes, but I it has become one of my you know standard brushes in a way, uh, and it's just really um. It has a, a few more settings, like tweak than the damp standard brush, and it's based on, the, I think it's based on the slash brush. Uh, so I, I modified that quite a bit uh, to get a, a, you know, a sharper edge. So for example, this is the knife one. I have a couple. I have this, well, I have this knife, and I have another one. Uh, those ones, if you're interested, comes they come with the clay brush pack the clay brushes pack which is digital clay so this is the digital clay pack so this is the one that um, that Francisco is asking this one right here but there is also this one um, that has kind of like a wet effect so when you do it when you uh, um, do the the strokes it sort of smooth things out like a polish in a way so that's kind of like a double action but this one it's um, it's really simple really and and that's not the one. <laughs> this one, and it just gives you a very quick and and sharp, soft edge, um, that you can use for a, bar a variety of things. So maybe I'll just use that for some quick folds in here. Alright, I'm gonna increase the dynamics resolution. I'm gonna go into solo. Alrighty, and then I can take the smooth the sorry, this standard brush. And just emphasize those those large folds or wrinkles here at the back. All right. So, yeah, kind of cool. <laughs> let's um, let's make this a. Ah, oh, no. Well, let's see. Let's hope. I haven't done a save for a long time. No problemo. Quick save. <laughs> All right, we'll we'll do the the hands in the next stream and pose him and finish it up. But um, you know what? Oh, I lost the the brush that I made. Um, yeah. No problem. Let's just take the the head, and I'm gonna use something like curved tubes really quickly. Gonna make some some of his hair sticking out like that. Split on mask. Get out of solo mode. So now we have this bead. Take the move brush. I can dynamesh that. So a little bit high that actually. <laughs> So I'm gonna try to flatten this. And let's position the gizmo over there.
just gonna add a few of these ones and then we can tweak them with the with the move brush. I think that will work as a starting point. I'm going to clear that mask and I'm going to auto group that. I'm going to use the move uh, topological so I can just place these things a bit better. Or not place them, but just in general manipulate those, those pieces kind of like independently from each other. I'm going to use polish. Coming back to the to the beanie and just again this is just compensating for the volumes that we just added and maybe without the symmetry yeah, we can maybe start adding some asymmetry, even though we have we don't have the guy posed or anything. But All right, I think <laughs> again, it's not the the my usual thing, but um every now and again it's good to get out of your comfort zone and, and just work on something. I'm going to try something with the with the mustache. Yeah, I think making it larger makes him feel a bit better. <laughs> Yeah, and it goes with the you know with the size of the eyes as well. All right, um, so just to wrap it up, we have 15 minutes. I'm just gonna do a quick work in poly paint as well um, to you know get get some ideas of what this guy might look like. So for the, I'll make it like very pale. And then you can just uh, add some hints of redness. Maybe not that pale, actually. Sometimes when I'm when I'm doing these concepts, um, half of the kind of like the look and feel, <laughs> um, I get it from the polypin and the texture alone. So just getting some, you know, working volumes, it will be just fine. And then the rest just comes like the, yeah, the the mood in a way just comes from the um, from the polypin. All right. 
I'm gonna isolate the eyeballs and I'm gonna select the material I'm gonna fill that material um, that color mask in that bring everything back so I basically change the eyeballs to have that material it's not gonna be very visible but I can go ahead and paint the, the pupils and the iris I think I'm gonna keep it simple so actually that kind of red color like make this guy um, um, yeah give him some red color anyway so if I do this I think that would work I'm actually gonna apply the um, dynamic and that will give me more resolution obviously uh, let's go ahead and do that again the problem with this one is that it looks kind of like from the Simpsons I think so yeah I'm just gonna Let's just change the yes, the stroke and use an alpha solid alpha like alpha forty eight and let's use a greenish color, maybe a darker one for the iris. So what I'm doing right now is just trying to get a, a good balance between that sort of softness of the border and you can just achieve that with um, changing the, the focal shift of the brush. I'm just going to reduce the the volume then have something a bit lighter here and then we can go back to the pupil. Done. I'm happy with that. Let's go ahead and reset the current brush so we can keep painting a bit more of that. Clear the mask. I'm going to go ahead and select the eyebrows. Fill object. Same thing for the beard. Fill object. Like that. Okay. And then I can take the body or the, <laughs> the head uh, with the same color and I can paint kind of like a nice nicer transition here for the beard but again we can change the focal shift to get um yeah to get this sharper line let's go into solo mode Right, <laughs> so um, yeah, this guy's a little bit funny. Alrighty, so uh, I'm gonna take the let's say the the mustache, and I'm just gonna add some darker bits of red color towards the bottom. Oh, okay. Same thing for the beard. Turn off symmetry. And I'm gonna do the same thing for the for the eyebrows and the hair. But here at the at the at the top maybe I can just add some more 
more towards the yellow color. Ah, I guess we can do the same thing in all the, the areas. All right. Um, yeah, I feel like this is this is working fine. <laughs> I'm gonna take the arms and then just give it the same sort of fill color and the t-shirt, uh, maybe just white color. Oops. All right, blue, yellow, green. Um, I'm just gonna stick with a sort of like color palette. Kind of like earthy tones as well. And for the beanie, let's try a darker green. More like, mm, like, like a gray color. Yeah, something like that. Um, and we can go ahead and obviously play with the with certain areas to add some tone variation. And that's, I think that's it, really. Yeah, so um, we can work on the on the hands on the next stream and maybe, you know, fix the <laughs> um, the baggy shirt and yeah, I think this guy would be in desperate need of a, of a coffee soon. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, that's that's about it guys. I think uh, we have like about five minutes left So if you guys have any questions, otherwise, I'll I'll leave it there. Thanks quick save <laughs> um, Hang on I put a joint in his mouth. Yeah, um, I'm not gonna encourage Smoking maybe a pipe. He, he has more the look of you know that he would be having a pipe. We, we'll do that in the next stream. Let's do a quick render. Yeah. Um, any tips for for be a streamer from Pixelogic one day? You guys are doing great. Oh, thanks, mate. Um, any tip to become a streamer? I guess that's the question. Um, I think you can just apply it. Uh, the the I think there is a form actually to apply and yeah I I don't, I don't I, I, so, sorry but I don't know the the process. Um, to be fair, like I yeah I I did it in a in a different way. So I didn't apply really. Uh, just because I've been you know sharing stuff with Zbrush for like years now and I had the Zbrush guides is sort of like got me into doing these type of things uh, more regularly, but I'm sure like if you apply that, um, that's one way to do it. Now he's alive with those eyes. <laughs> All right, cool. So yeah, I'm gonna leave it here, guys. Um, I'll do a quick render and, and share it as always. And um, we'll you know, we'll continue working on this guy next stream. Um, definitely something different, so it's good every now and again to to move away from the creature stuff and, and do something else. And again, remember for those who were not here when I when I shared this, um, let's see, where do I have that? So if you go to the, I mean, the, um, the, sculpt, of, uh, the sculpt of this year is open for everyone, right? So just go and check the the Zero's Life sculpt of um, rules, but if you go to, I'm gonna share the, this link again. Um, if you go to this website uh, or Marlon's website, the the Art Heroes, uh, we are doing a join free webinar that you can just subscribe or not subscribe, register, so that uh, when you register, you get an email with the the link and the code to access this webinar, uh, and it's gonna be happening on November the 5th at 8 a.m. Uh, Australian time. But um, if you click on this little thing, it will open up the time body and it will tell you, you know. So I have the, the two, I don't know if you're gonna see this, but I have the Lisbon, Portugal. That's where Marlon is at the moment. I'm in Melbourne, Australia. So we're doing it 
8 a.m. my time, 9 p.m. the previous day his time. So on um, on on Wednesday. Uh, anyway, so you if you join, if you want to join, it's free to join. Uh, we're gonna be giving some like some tips and tricks to speed up your workflow, especially thinking about the the idea of you guys that want to participate in the Sculpt of this year, and obviously we're gonna share some of our experience as well in the in the sculpt of i've been there once marlon has been there twice so we're just going to talk about you know the 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 because it, it becomes very intense <laughs> uh, it's going to be slightly different if everything is online obviously but uh, hopefully our experience could um give you guys some some ideas on how to tackle that um that sculpt of but it's going to be pretty cool so yeah just go here register and um that's pretty much it Uh, hey, Moram, <laughs> no worries. You can just catch up with it um, later on. How do how do how do I set up my system in Stream? I I'm not very good at it to be honest. I just use OBS, um, and I I linked it to the Stream the Restream app that the Pixelogic guys use. Uh, but if you just Google it, I'm, I'm the ton, tons and tons of videos that tell you how to do it. Uh, OBS is really good. Streamlabs, I think, is also very good. Um, and you can, if you have like a YouTube channel, uh, which if you have a Gmail account, you will have by default a, a YouTube channel, so you can just get a link or a, a key and connect it to it. But um, yeah, just just Google it. It's really really easy. I'm not the best person to ask. I'm, I I barely know how to do these <laughs> um, these these streams. All right, guys, so I'm going to leave it here and I won't see you next week because of the the Zero Summit, obviously, but I will see you the week after. And just to let you know, the uh, the Ultimate Zero's Guide course, for those of you who are interested in joining that, that hopefully is happening after the summit. So I'm going to stop it here, go back and working on, on, on those things to, to get it ready. But yeah, hopefully that'll be that'll be ready. All right, guys, take it easy, and I'll see you in a couple of weeks. Bye. Or actually, I'll see you this week if you want to join the, the, the webinar.